Hi everyone, it's Megan Crockart from Balancing Nutrition. I thought I would go through the ins and outs of intermittent fasting with you. I wrote an article a while back, it was pretty big actually, so I thought I would read through it for you. You can always go and have a read through it, it's on my website, balancingnutrition.com.au. So, what is intermittent fasting? The term intermittent fasting has been around since 2012, although fasting of various types has been around since at least the 5th century BC, even longer and it's still regularly performed by many religions even to this day. The term intermittent fasting means that you fast for a certain period of time each day. For example, you only eat in a particular time frame win window such as 7am to 3pm or there is the option of having days where you eat less than other days such as the 5 and 2 diet. This is when two days a week you only eat 500 calories per day with the other days you're able to eat more calories you can play around with that one. So there are various ways you can do intermittent fasting to make it that little bit easier. The idea is that if you follow the time frame version, you go without food for 16 to 18 hours, which is usually overnight. But once you've been fasting for a 12 hour window, you will start to get value, as this is technically when your body goes into a fasted state. Although the 16 to 18 hour window does show some more health benefits. So therefore, you only eat during the remaining eight hour window in daylight hours. So recent studies have shown that eating earlier in the day has more advantage such as 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. compared with later in the day such as 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Although this time frame will still achieve results as well. So most of the original studies on intermittent fasting has come from how it works with men's bodies and their hormones. Some women can't tolerate it or can't tolerate the longer fast of 16 to 18 hours. What I usually recommend to people is start with eight to 12 hours and experiment and see how you go. If you wake up really hungry or stressed, then listen to your body and eat. See how your body goes increasing these fast times or move the fast time to a different time of the day and see what works for you. There's really no hard and fast rule on this. So more recent studies are showing the optimal time to eat is 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. But other suggested times can include 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. But this is only if you go to bed later and it's not really ideal. And 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. This is strictly just for shift workers. You shouldn't be eating during the middle of the night. Intermittent Fasting works much better at eating according to the body's circadian rhythm and only eating during daylight hours, which is really when we are meant to eat and hence why I said doing the nighttime eating should only be for those shift workers. Addressing stress, anxiety, sleep and some severe gut issues is important before you start doing intermittent fasting. So what are the benefits? I've listed out about eight benefits. There's a lot more, but I'll go through these eight. So number one, weight loss without feeling hungry. So between meals, when we don't snack, our insulin levels go down and fat cells can then release their stored sugar to be used as energy. We lose weight if we let our insulin levels go down. The entire idea of intermittent fasting is to allow the insulin levels to go down far enough and for long enough that we burn off our fat. This increases your ability to become fat adapted, which is your body burning fat for fuels instead of carbs. So number two, it improves blood sugar balance by increasing insulin and leptin sensitivity, which then in turn decreases metabolic and diabetes risks. Plus it can also reduce the risk of heart disease. Number three, can reduce inflammation and helps to fight free radical damage. Number four, reduces cortisol if it's suited to your body type. Cortisol is your stress hormone. Some people can have an increase in cortisol first thing in the morning to get the body going after a long fast. So it may not be a suitable method of eating for some, especially some women. So once again, something to play around with, see if it works for you or not. Number five, supports and improves healthy gut function and gut bacteria. So having a break from eating is optimal for healthy digestive function. If we are bombarding it with food nonstop, it doesn't get the chance to break things down and take its time to do what it has to do. A good amount of time between eating is three to four hours to really let that meal be digested. 
So fasting at night while you're sleeping is the best time to do so, especially when it comes to your gut health. At night we go into called what is we go into what is called rest and digest, and we certainly don't want to be interrupting this time with food. Starting your fast at least two hours before you go to bed is optimal. That is if you can't do the earlier fast time. Because you want to ensure that you are not in the early stages of digestion when you hit the pillow. So number six, it improves brain function. Who doesn't need that? Number seven, it can boost athletic performance. And number eight, due to all of the above that I've just said, it can increase your energy levels and lengthen your, your lifespan. We all want a bit of that, don't we? So there are a number of health conditions that it is thought to help. And I've listed a few of them. So number one, weight loss resistance and obesity. Number two, insulin resistance and prediabetes. Number three, joint inflammation, which does include arthritis. Number four, fatty liver disease. Number five, brain fog. Number six, gut issues, especially IBS and SIBO. And number seven, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So as I've alluded to, intermittent fasting is not necessarily for everyone because no diet suits everyone, otherwise we'd all be doing it and it would be something simple, wouldn't it? So there are some people who shouldn't do intermittent fasting and they can include pregnant and breastfeeding women, children and teenagers. Some health conditions such as type one diabetics can do it but you should work with a healthcare professional to ensure that hyperglycemia doesn't become a problem. Some people with thyroid conditions may also not tolerate this lifestyle choice. Once again, as I said, it's playing around with it. Also, um, those that may not um, be recommended to do intermittent fasting are those with a history of eating disorders as it could initiate a relapse. And some people just know when they try it that they're not suited to doing intermittent fasting. And that's okay don't do it so what do you eat if you're doing intermittent fasting obviously if you're eating highly processed convenient junk foods and drinks including alcohol intermittent fasting is not going to have a great effect but you don't have to restrict calories unless you choose to do the five and two option but if you but you do have to ensure you're eating healthy Good protein and fats are crucial, especially when you break your fast at breakfast, whatever time of day that might be, depending on what time frame you have picked. Avoiding sugar and refined grains is also a must. Eating whole foods such as fruit, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, protein and good fats is recommended and also drinking lots of filtered water, but we should all be doing that anyway. And the good thing with intermittent fasting is you don't have to do it every day to get results. A few times a week can be valuable. But if you think, oh, I'm not really up to doing intermittent fasting, this doesn't sound like it's gonna work for me, or you give it a try and it really doesn't seem to suit you, then at the very least, try not to snack. We really don't need to snack as adults, the majority of us. Unless you really have to have something to eat like you feel that your blood sugar levels are crashing or you're just starving hungry. Otherwise, we don't need to snack. And remember that sometimes hunger is confused with thirst. So always try drinking a glass of water and checking if you're still hungry 10 minutes later. So at the very least, just try to have three main meals a day and have that at least two hour window of before bed. So eat your last meal, dinner, and then two hours go to bed. Don't go to bed straight after. So a lot of people ask me if I do intermittent fasting and I do, um, I do do intermittent fasting around most days, but I only do 12 to 14 hour fasts. I've worked out my body likes this time frame, and I have seen some great benefits, especially to do with my blood sugar balance. I really listen to my body and I know that the longer time frame of 16 to 18 hours is not suitable for me at all. But if I do wake up really hungry and I'm finding it hard to face a day and get going, then I just eat. Uh, but generally it is usually at a minimum of eight hours after I've eaten my last meal because most nights I finish eating for the day around 6 p.m. and I usually would only have a cup of chamomile tea before bed it's pretty rare I would I have anything else 
So if you would like guidance and some personalized advice on intermittent fasting and you want to give it a go, but you want someone to guide you through it, let me know, reach out to me, send me an email, text, whichever way you want to contact me. My details are on my website um, and we can have a chat through it. I did want to make a little note though, I'm not an extent, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of extended fast or water fasting. And I feel if people are wanting to do this, they really need the guidance of a health professional to do it. Um, but intermittent fasting is very different to um, extended fasting and water fasting. So reach out. Thank you for listening. And always have a look at my website for my new articles that come out. And see you next time.